Hi guys, welcome to the Nevisworks Tips and Tricks session. Uh, my name is Deepak Mani. Uh, I'm your presenter today. Um, in this session, I'm going to show you how to perform clash detection of various components on an oil rig. Before we jump into Nevisworks, uh, just a quick introduction about CAD Group Australia. CAD Group is an Autodesk Platinum Value Added Reseller. As a matter of fact, we were the first Value Added Reseller that got the Platinum status in uh, ANZ, which is Australia and New Zealand region. Um, CAD Group has been in business for the last 25 years. We have been selling and uh, supporting various Autodesk products. And our core expertise is in the field of digital prototyping, building information modeling, client design, and document management. Please visit www.cadgroup.com.au for more information about uh, CAD Group Australia. Uh, about me, um, I'm the National Head of Technical at CAD Group. Uh, I'm also a mechanical engineer with more than 15 years of experience of working with various companies around the world. I've been using Navisworks for close to about eight years now. I've been training people all around the world on Navisworks for um, about eight years. Uh, I'm also a speaker at Ordes University. Um, I presented in 2012. I'll also be presenting in 2013. I'm also the author of Up and Running with Ordes Navisworks 2014 textbook. Uh, this textbook is specially written for uh, both plant and building industry. Uh, it's got about 648 pages with about 400 pages of step-by-step -step tutorials um, taking you from uh, scratch to the intermediate, intermediate level in Ordes Navisworks. Uh, you can visit my website www.deepakmani.com for more information about me as well as this particular textbook. All right, so with this, let's jump on to Navisworks so we could start with our clash action. Uh, clash test uh, between various components of an oil rig. So as you could see here, I've got this oil rig uh, open in Navisworks. Um, what you would also notice that in my sets window, I've got all these different sets created. Uh, most of these are search sets, as you could see here. Uh, there's also a selection set that I created. Um, it's always a good idea to have uh, selection, selection sets or search sets uh, created before you start performing your uh, clash test. It helps you in selecting various components. So in this particular example, I'm going to perform a clash test between pipes and structure. So if I look at my pipes um, search set, when I click on pipes and I go and say hide unselected, it basically just selects all these pipes in the entire oil rig. Similarly, if I go and pick structures, it picks all these structural members uh, on the oil rig. I'm only interested in this region. That's why I didn't pick uh, the structural members sitting at the bottom uh, for the selection. Um, obviously, we need to activate our clash detective window to be able to do that. Uh, please note that clash detection is only available in Navisworks Manage. So if you're using uh, one of the suites, it'll, it'll be available in the ultimate suite of, uh, of your products. Uh, in my case, I've created a workspace called Clash Detection Workspace in which it basically turns off various windows, only leaves the uh, Clash Detection window turned on on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a new Clash test. Um, I generally prefer specifying an obvious name for my Clash test. So in this case, I'm going to say it's a Clash test between pipes versus structure. Uh, and now in my selection area where I've got selection A and selection B areas, instead of leaving it as standard tab, I'm going to select sets from here. So it'll show me the various sets that I've created in my um, Navisworks scene. Uh, my first selection is pipes and my second selection is structures. Now from the area down the bottom, I'll only pick surfaces because I'm only interested in performing the clash test between the surfaces. However, if one of these uh, uh, parts of my Navisworks scene was, let's say, a point cloud, I could have picked points here as well. Um, obviously, I'm not interested in self-intersect. Uh, the reason is because uh, it is the responsibility of uh, the structural guys or the piping people to make sure that their pipes or their structures are not uh, interfering uh, within themselves. So obviously, I'm not going to pick self-intersect uh, in both the selections. The type of clash test that I'm going to create is a hard clash, so it will only pick the objects that are physically interfering. I specified a tolerance of 10 mil, uh, obviously because we are based in Australia, we work with metric units. 
uh, if you want you can use uh, other units by simply changing your global options um, so all I need to do now is I'm gonna click on run test as soon as I click on run test it will perform the clash between the structures and the pipe and then it now comes up with a message telling me that there are there are a total of 20 clashes found let me hide this uh, test panel so I could uh, look at my various clash results the good thing about Navisworks clash test is as soon as you click on any of these clashes, it now basically takes you straight to that particular clash. So this way I can one by one click on each of these clashes and look at where these clashes are. Um, looking at uh, various options available in the display settings area, the first item that we selected, which was pipes, they are displayed in this red color, whereas the second selection, was, uh, which is structure, is displayed in green. Um, if I turn this item two off, it basically starts using uh, uh, the uh, display color only for the first selection. The second selection won't be displayed highlighted. Um, I can also pick highlight all flashes, which is not what I'm going to do here. By default, dim other is turned on which means all the other objects around these clashing objects are dimmed. If I turn it off, it uh, doesn't dim the rest of the objects, so it's a bit hard to figure out where these clashes were. That's why it's always a good idea to leave it turned on. Um, you can also click on this button under the view in context area. So it basically shows you this particular clash in context with the home view because that's what we have picked here. Similarly, I can go and start clicking on any of these clashes to look at where these clashes are. Once you have interrogated all these clashes, you could also right click on any of these clashes and you can assign it to certain people. So I know the structural engineer in my office who's gonna take care of uh, moving the structure is uh, Bruce Trevina. So I can go and assign to Bruce. So all I'm doing is I'm assigning it to Bruce, adding some notes for Bruce. So uh, Bruce knows uh, when he looks at these clashes, it'll know he'll know uh, what all clashes have been assigned to him. So this way I can go and assign uh, each of these clashes to uh, the people I'm I want uh, to look at or I want to change. Um, down the bottom, you've got the items area. The items area is an interesting one. It basically uh, shows you your two selec uh, selections and the uh, objects that are clashing. Now, this is where Navisworks is really smart. Uh, if I was working with live uh, plant 3D models or live micro session models, uh, this is where I can go and say switch back. Uh, so the whole idea is it will take me back to the native program, whether it is uh, Inventor or it is Client 3D or it is Civil 3D or it is MicroStation or Revit, whatever that program is, provided I've got them ready for um, switchback. So it will take me back to the same uh, native program in which these uh, components were modeled. Uh, and the best thing is it will be zoomed exactly at the location where the clashes are. I can go and say uh, select the object in the scene. So if the object is selected in the scene and then when I go and say switch back, when it opens this uh, a structure model in the native program, this particular structure member would actually be highlighted. So it straight away tells me where the clashes are and what is the member that I need to fix. Now in this case, I'm not uh, working with the live model, so obviously I can't do a switchback to fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and generate a report out of it. In my report, this is all the information I want to include. And because we, are, we have only one clash test, so I'm going to go and say current test and I'm writing a report in the HTML tabular format. I prefer this because I can drag and drop this file in, um, uh, into an Excel file and look at the reports, uh, look at the re uh, results there as well. So if I click on write report, it lets me write the report. I'm going to go into this folder here and uh, this is the report I want to write. So it creates a new HTML file with whatever is the name of your clash test. Let me do a quick save. So it's written the report. Uh, I can go back to my overview view now. And if I go and open that reports folder, so you would notice that it's created this uh, 
a file called pipes versus structure.xml. And it's also created this folder, which basically has all those 20 clash viewpoints. So if I double click on this HTML file to open, it gives me all the information about my clashes. And if I click on any of these images, it would basically open that enlarged image from that image folder that it automatically creates inside the folder that you have picked for your clashes. So if I go into the clash that I assigned to Bruce, um, I'll be able to see that information as well. So this is the uh, clash that I assigned to Bruce, and I can see it in the comments, the comments that I added. So when Bruce gets this um, uh, clash report, he'll be able to straight away see what are the clashes that are assigned to him and uh, any associated notes with it. So that's a quick session on how to perform clashes in Ordas Navisworks. Um, thanks for your time. Cheers.